Recently, I got a comment on one of my videos suggesting that I should build my own Linux distribution. And initially, I responded by suggesting that's probably a bit too much work for a couple days, but then later, I remembered that I actually did build my own Linux distribution about seven years ago. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Now the short version of this is that nobody uses this distribution, and I don't work on it anymore. And you could criticize my project as being little more than a run-through of Linux from scratch, but with the result running in a virtual machine with a custom wallpaper background. My original goal with this project was to turn it into a business idea. I had recently spent a bunch of time teaching at a local college, and my experiences there led me to think about a better way to teach students the program. In order to test out my prototype, I actually started out a local meetup group, and I had a few people try out the initial product. I did get some positive feedback, and I actually made a couple sales, but eventually I came to the conclusion that it would just take too much work to maintain this. The process of creating course content was very time consuming, and the initial version didn't really come with a lot of course content. The whole idea behind creating a dedicated distribution for this was that I could ship a patched version of Bash and Readline and, and a bunch of other utilities, so I could basically create a terminal environment that would include a whole bunch of other features for people who were just learning the command line. So for example, it would know what input you're supposed to type in, and then if you don't type it incorrectly, it would give you some feedback on what the problem was. I wanted to actually ship a controlled experience of the Linux command line environment that would work even for people who are on Windows, because obviously the market size of Windows users is much bigger than Linux. And if I had a full distribution that I could package into a virtual machine image, then I could make this work on other people's computers fairly easily. I initially did a bit of research to figure out if I could just reship something like Debian or Ubuntu, but I had some legal concerns about that for trademark issues. Now in terms of technical details for why this was so unmaintainable, was after I created the course content, I needed some way of actually testing that it worked. So that way, if someone was actually trying to go through a given challenge, the system wouldn't end up just crashing on them or giving them a dead end. Now for testing the input and output on the terminal, I used a tool called Expect. And this tool works well for simple cases, but in my experience I had problems with race conditions. So sometimes the terminal would lag a bit, and the input or output would come at the wrong time, and that would totally break all the tests. And in order to keep track of where someone actually was in a given challenge, I had a backend server that was written in Python. And initially this worked well, but as the system became more complicated, I started to regret choosing Python, specifically for things like error handling. Now I thought that using a virtual machine would protect me from a lot of the underlying user hardware, but when I was trying this out, I actually discovered that it would not boot at all on my parents' computer and apparently there was some hardware detail that was being passed through into the virtual machine. And when I looked into this, I found out that I could solve the issue, but I had to recompile the kernel with a different module enabled. And this was the point where it dawned on me that maintaining a distribution is a colossal amount of work. And in hindsight, I think it would have required a lot of additional investment to get this idea off the ground too. And especially when you can learn a lot of the same things on YouTube. At this point, I really think that making YouTube videos is a much more economically viable way to bootstrap an educational product. I think if I was to try something like this again today, I would be a lot more successful at it. But having said that, I'm not going to. So if you want to steal this idea, go for it. Now I mentioned the Linux from Scratch project, so I'll talk a bit about that. In addition to Linux from Scratch, I also did the Beyond Linux from Scratch. Now I've heard people ask before, is it worth doing Linux from scratch? And I would say it depends on what you want to get out of it. If your goal is to experiment with trying to create a new Linux distribution, then I think it's great. And if you want to deepen your knowledge of how a Linux system is actually put together, then I think it's also great. But if you're thinking about running it natively as your daily driver, then I don't really think it's a good choice. Personally, when I did my run through of Linux from scratch, I did the entire process inside of a virtual machine, and I backed it up along the way. Back when I did it, I think it took me 11 consecutive days to go through every single step. I would say that it's actually more time consuming than difficult. Most of the process is just running configure scripts and waiting for things to compile. Also, there's a couple critical steps along the way where if you do them wrong, you'll have to come back and redo it all from scratch. It was also during this compiling period that I found out that my laptop had a bad stick of RAM. One of my sticks of RAM was flipping bits and the result was random compilation failures. I think that one very underappreciated aspect of Linux from scratch is the fact that they provide you with the build logs. This way, if you encounter any weird looking errors during the build process, you can compare them with the official notes from Linux from scratch to see if they're actually a problem or not. Even though my original idea didn't really work out, going through this process taught me a lot about how a Linux system is put together. I also realized from this experience just how much work it is to maintain a distribution. And in my case, I even had things on easy mode. I've also found a lot of other uses for the documentation in the Linux from scratch project. Usually, when I have a problem with my system, I'll look up the documentation for Ubuntu or Debian. If I can't find anything there, I'll usually look at the Arch Linux documentation. 
and if I can't find anything there, my last resort is to check Linux from scratch. Okay, so that's a look at my failed Linux distribution that nobody uses. I don't have it available for download anymore, and it wasn't really worth downloading anyway. The content that you saw in this video is pretty much all that I had in there. And like I said, if you want to steal this idea and run with it, go for it.